Hi there, uh, welcome to another episode of the Chaos Chamber and to Sigil of the Week. This week I'm going to do something a little different for you. Um, I thought it would be fun to uh, show you taking the same statement of intent and converting it to a, an, a, an Osman, excuse me, an Osman Spare Sigil, that's it, <laughs> like a standard letter sigil. Um, and also a planetary sigil, so you could see them side by side. Um, both of these are explained in my book, The Sigil Secret. Um, also, if you buy this, the, the book, I highly recommend you buy the, the pack with the Protocol of Intent, the worksheet, because it helps you get a clearer statement of intent. Um, so I'm using the Square of Saturn partly because it's the easiest one to demonstrate with. Um, and so I've chosen a statement that fits with that square. I am disciplined. Um, this is quite a, a generally useful one in life anyway. So what I'm going to do first is well, I'll make the letter sigil and then I'll make the planetary sigil for you. So as usual, the first thing we do is remove the vowels. So again, this process is explained in my book um, in, in great detail. Um, Os Os Osman spare sigils as well as planetary. Um, I'm going to say at this point, one is not better than the other. It's purely a preference thing. So we end up with this string of letters here. Okay, so we can then just uh, remove any duplicates. So we've only got, I think it's just the D there. Yes. So M, D, S, C, P, L, N. So we'll start with the M. So I'm going to keep this over so I don't kind of run into it when I'm doing the planetary one. S, C, P, L. I'm doing the L backwards and then the N. There, there we go. So, rounding it off with the circles and the lines. Um, I'm just going to extend this bit out here a little bit and bring that off like that. There we go. So, that would be my letter sigil, my Austin Osmond Spare variant. Um, in order to make a planetary sigil, it's a slightly longer process. Um, so what we would do first is you would uh, want to look up uh, some kind of gematria. So in my book, um, on page 89, conveniently, page 89 and 90, we have a list of several gematria. Um, so I'm going to use the Pythagorean one because it only goes up to nine. Um, so you won't... Uh, have sort of cumbersome large numbers. In, in some other videos, I've talked a little bit about how to handle large numbers. Um, so we're going to use the Pythagorean table and we're going to convert the numbers into letters. Um, and so the, uh, the letter M is 4, D is 4, S, blah, 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 where's S? is one, C is three, P is seven. So I put a line through the seven just so it's obvious. L is three. So we're gonna get a few duplicates here. N is five. There we go. So we have a string of digits there. Four, four, one, three, seven, three, five. Now to simplify the sigil, I'm going to remove the duplicates because I think it's going to get a bit messy otherwise, but you don't have to. Um, and I'll, I'll show you on another one. So we're going to use four, th four, one, three, four, one, three, seven, five. So we're going to start at the number four and put a little circle there, a line down from four to one, from one up to three, from three across to seven, and then from seven back to five. And there we have it. So if we transfer this and put it next to this one. There you go. So there is your letter sigil and your planetary sigil. We can neatly separate them off like that. And there you have it. Um, they look markedly different. You can see where I've got the circles and the lines here. Um, but I, I am a big fan of planetary sigils. I really like the look of them. Um, and so when I, I use them quite a lot when I'm 
doing any kind of working. So one last thing with the, with this string of digits is an extra thing you can do is to is to give your sigil a magic number, which I talk about in the book a little bit. This gives you kind of a um, uh, it can be used in charging rituals and can dictate sort of how many times you do incantations, things like that. So to get a magic number, you add these numbers together. So four plus one is five, seven and three is 10, five plus seven is five. So you add them together and you get 20. Two plus zero equals two. So the magic number is two. So, for example, you may want to put a Roman numerical 2 inside your sigil as a reminder. That's entirely up to you. So there you go. Uh, I am disciplined. Letter sigil, planetary sigil, um, and then how to make a magic number for the sigil. All of this is, uh, is, is put in great detail in my book, um, The Sigil Secret. It's available from Trudwell's Books in London um, and uh, worldwide on Amazon. Um, it's also available from the chaoschamber.com. Um, go there, drop me an email, ask me any questions you like. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next Chaos Chamber. Thanks.